What's going on and welcome back to the channel. Today in this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to put a text behind a person or an object. Let's get into it. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring up videos to help you grow as creators. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Today in this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you three different ways to add a text behind an object or a person. One of these is definitely gonna be the paid version. There are, however, two ways that are in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So if you're watching the first one and you're like, I can't do this because I have a free version of DaVinci Resolve, hold tight or skip ahead to the two free versions that there are methods to do that as well to get you the same effect. One is just a little faster than the other. Let's hop inside DaVinci Resolve and get going. So the easiest way to do this is I am just gonna be focusing on one clip at a time. So I'm gonna move both of these out of the way for now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this video clip and I am gonna hit option on a Mac. I am going to lift it and bring it above. It's going to copy it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be focusing on this one. I'm gonna lift this one up so I've got a little bit of a gap. Uh, so I'm not confused in the coloring tab. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of one of these. So I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna go to the clip color and I'm gonna do it as lime green. So let's go into the color tab and in here you can see that I have them separated. I have the green clip right here is number one and then the blue clip is number three. So in here, there's a couple things we need to do. First thing we need to do is we need to right click and we're gonna add an alpha output. It's gonna bring this little blue, little dot in here. We're gonna grab the blue and we are gonna connect it to that. It's basically sending our effect out. If we don't have that selected on certain effects, it's not gonna show up and that may be why some of you have been stumped before. So what we need to do is we need to go into the magic mask. I've already got the tab selected right here. I am going to make sure I have the plus sign selected. And then I'm just gonna start painting onto our model here. I'm just gonna kind of cover as much as possible without going too far out. I'm just gonna get majority of her. The more you can get in the mask, the better it's gonna do. Again, you don't have to go crazy but you can see that already selected it very well. If you do this and you don't have the mask showing up right here under toggle mask overlay, you can turn that on and off. So you may have done this and you're like, where's my mask? Make sure it's turned on so you can actually see it. Now that I have her selected and masked, there's a couple things I like to do. I like to change the quality from faster to better. Now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna track it because if I start going through this, you can see that the mask is only right here where that little blue dot is. It only added one keyframe. So we're gonna slide over and we are gonna hit the forward and backwards button and it's gonna track it backwards and forward. If you're in a hurry, the faster is okay and will work for majority of your cases, but the better quality is always gonna give you a better result. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop back into the edit tab and in here, I'm gonna click on the bottom track. I'm gonna shut it off and I'm gonna play that through again. See how that looks. Yeah, that actually looks really well. The last step of this is grabbing a text. I prefer to do a text plus, dropping it in here, stretching it out to our video clip length. And then under the inspector, we can change the text and we can change the font size. We can change the color, the tracking, the spacing, whatever we're wanting it to be. Something I like to do is go into the settings and I like to actually turn the opacity down just a little bit so it's not overpowering. And sometimes I'll add an effect on it or two. I do like to go in the shading as well as sometimes and do inverted, but I think for this one, it looks great just having it be the way that it is. And because it's a text plus, if we wanted to, we could go into the transform and we can actually keyframe some of this because it's a text plus. If it's just a normal text, you're not able to keyframe that. Now, before I get to the last two effects, let's talk about the sponsor of this video and that is Motion Array. I've been using Motion Array for years now and I'm always blown away by the high quality stuff they're pumping out. I just jump on motionarray.com, look up some assets and me being an editor that primarily works in DaVinci Resolve, I love that they have so many templates and presets designed specifically for that. There's so much to choose from. I find what I need, download it, load it inside my editor and there's so many ways you can customize each one of these assets. You can 
design it to be perfect for the style that you're looking for in the video. I will have a link in the description below if you're wanting to check out Motion Array. Use that link when you sign up and you'll get $50 off your annual plan. Thank you so much Motion Array for sponsoring this video and other creators just like me. Let's go over the last two effects that you can accomplish in any version of DaVinci Resolve, the free or paid version. So the first one I want to do is we're gonna grab the Statue of Liberty clip right here. We're gonna bring it over here. Let me play that through so I can get an idea of what it looks like. I think that looks great. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna grab a text plus. We're not gonna duplicate the video. This is the most simple way you could do on this. We're gonna grab it, we're gonna bring it right over here, stretch it out. We're gonna change in the inspector, the text, as well as the font, maybe the color, the size, whatever you're wanting to do. I'm gonna leave it white. I like this font, I like the size, I like the tracking, think it looks good. Uh, I did accomplish the inverted by going to the shading tab, and then I just changed it from the appearance of being just like that to just the outside. You can change the thickness if you'd like to, but I like it the way that it is. I think it's solid. Now, to accomplish what I wanna do next, I go into the settings, and then under the composite mode, instead of normal, we can change it in here. I'm gonna do difference, and you can see it does something different. It's gonna actually change the color of the font here as well as outside when the sun is on it to when the sun is not on it. It's not exactly putting it behind it, but it is gonna give you a very interesting effect. Now, the other way you could do this if you didn't like that is if we wanted to make this text be black, we could make it be black by the, bringing the color tab there, going back to the settings, and instead of that, let's just do normal. And now it looks like it's behind it because this is a silhouette. Again, this doesn't work for everything, but it does look really good for something like this. This is a very stylized way to do that. You could do the exact same thing. You could track the text. So let's say we like it there. We'll go back, we'll bring it up here, and then we'll play it through. And then now New York drops down behind it. It's giving a completely different style. Now, the last effect is a way to do it just like we did the first one, having the text behind the city, but this is the way to do it in the free version. So I am going to, again, duplicate my video clip, bring it up here. We're gonna change the bottom one to green because I think it's easiest for me to know. So I'm gonna change it to green. I'm gonna jump into the color tab and in here I'm gonna click on the top clip because I wanna make sure I have that selected. Then I'm gonna go into the mask right here, not magic mask, we're gonna go into the window, which is mask, but DaVinci Resolve calls it window. Uh, I am going to select the cursor and I am gonna kind of zoom in just a little bit and we're gonna start drawing around the building just like so. Now I am burning through this pretty quickly just for the purpose of this tutorial. However, I would really take your time and go through and make it look really good. Try to get it as close to the buildings as possible. Uh, but just for the purpose of this tutorial, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna bring it around here to finish it. I am just gonna be on the last one. I'm gonna click the first one and it's gonna bring that mass together. We don't have our alpha output. We're gonna grab that, connect it, you can see that it is finished there. I did, however, make a crucial mistake, and that is I did the green one instead of the blue one. That's an easy fix. We just jump back in the edit page. We grab the blue, drop it down, bring the green above it, and then we can shut off the blue if we want, and we can see how the mask looks. You can see it's not great. It's definitely not pretty. So what we're gonna do is hop back into the color tab, and in here, you can actually soften it up just a little bit if you want. Uh, you could zoom in really tight if you wanted and clean that up really good. But again, like I mentioned earlier, just kind of burning through this fast. Now, one of the problems with this one is again, it's not following it. It looks absolutely terrible by the time it gets to there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the tracker. We're gonna click that. It's then gonna go step by step tracking it and holding frame by frame. Then I would hop back in the edit tab. I have a text right here, bring it over. Let's go ahead and enable that so it's there. Then you can add a text behind it. You can see it's not perfect because I didn't spend an insane amount of time on the mask. This is gonna give you the same result as the magic mask. The difference is, is one is way more time consuming than the other. But there you go. Three different ways to add a text behind an object or a person inside DaVinci Resolve. I hope you learned something. I'll have links in the description below for Motion Ray if you're wanting to check them out. You're amazing. I'm Darren Giant. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.